Cat. It's Max was here. This time a little review and tear down of the fl uh, flip out by Speed Hex. So this is a che cheesy Chinese made electric screwdriver. This actually happens to be a second generation. So enough people were buying them to get a second generation. First generation actually had integrated batteries. This battery is really short as you can see. 14650. Two cells. Being an 8 volt quote unquote max, plus this little raised area here. So, a couple differences. Of course, its claim to fame is this multi articulating. So, you can twist the head. So, if, if however you're gripping the screwdriver isn't working with the head, then you can just rotate it however you want. You can rotate the head continuously because the little light that they have integrated, which is really cheesy, is here. It's powered by a tiny little button cell. I guess they tried, but that light barely even works. Although being able to aim it uh, would have been an interesting idea. So, multi-articulating screwdriver. Do that straight. It has a pivot point here and a second pivot point here. So this can do actually impossible screwdriving tasks such as this. I don't know what situation you might be in. But nonetheless, there could be a situation where maybe at this angle or at this angle, pointing backwards, is just something like the Bosch iDriver and other attempts at articulating electric screwdrivers haven't achieved. This thing is not very strong. As a matter of fact, it really is just a little electric screwdriver levels of torque. So maybe, you know, this would be handy for people working on computers or... Maybe, yeah, you know, appliance installation, something like that, where you really are working with fasteners in a pretty tight area. It does have some degree of variable speed. More like a low, medium, and high, but at least it has something. Once again, A lot of complaints on the first generation of it basically blowing out its gears. I think that when they introduced these, these are like 80 bucks, but I've seen them, you know, for 20 or 30 on eBay. One, probably because of reliability issues, but once again, primary with the first generation unit. And, you know, some people talking about lack of power. It's okay for, I mean, even though it's there's lots of 8 volt max screwdrivers which are going to be much more powerful than this the way it has a geared the mode you're going to have electric motor planetary probably two stage planetary reduction gearbox and a whole set of spur gears set of spur gears in here which I don't know which side or if they're actually using both sides but there's going to be a bevel gear going out to a set of spur gears going back into the front head and then back out and so the complexity of this driver is obvious it's just not only do you have like a traditional electric screwdriver but you have this whole these whole extra components and this whole uh, articulating midsection and all the pieces for the locking there's just a lot of parts in this once again it does or not once again i didn't think i mentioned it, it does have a spray clutch so it is designed so that you can break screws and then of course power them out and they even added a little spring to the chuck, so bits want to pop out easier when you release it. Thought we'd take a look inside. I mean, the biggest advantage of something like this, even though it's gimmicky, is for people who really, such as in a situation like this, where you really need to get pretty flush against the surface, many times installing or assembling metal, sheet, you know, things like sheet metal shelves and that type of stuff often have screws that are like, really close to surfaces and so versus using like a drill or impact driver with one of those little right angle adapters which they sell at you know home depots and stuff those things are tough and those are about your best bet but then you have to have a drill or an impact driver and manage the little right angle bit where this is still going to be since it locks in place is going to be one-handed and will at least allow you to be able to start some screws you know, real flush against the surface. I mean, you need, you know, probably three quarters of an inch or something uh, of side clearance. So that's a, a big deal. And then once again, being able to reach and 
difficult places and end angles. Although I have to say, as just a normal angle driver, those little right angle adapters for impact drivers probably are just a, I can't dig up mine right now, but they are going to be a bit shorter. You still have a good couple inches here, plus, you know, the length of whatever bit you're using. But still, nonetheless, it is pretty compact, you know, notoriously working on screws like, say, inside door panels or rear speakers and sedans under the sloping rear window or a lot of times where you need a real compact screwdriver. Also realized with the socket adapter, it actually worked pretty well for uh, worm driver, screw drive type hose clamps. And the double articulating being at every 30 degrees would allow something once again like this where you're at. You're like at it, so you're flush against the surface, but then the screwdriver's at an angle. And, and do you think it's an interesting idea? It's just, you know, kind of bulky. And you kind of understand that because, you know, you're transferring mechanical power that you actually want to do work with. And that's difficult. There are tools with tiny gears that transmit lots of power, but they have to be expensive materials. And with all the little parts that this thing has, I'm sure they're not doing it. The charger is super basic. It's just like a red green. As soon as it hits a certain voltage, it charges up. It's not a balancing charger or anything like that. Although it does use this small terminal to charge with, and it uses large terminals for the discharge, so I'm not entirely sure. There may be some kind of rudimentary circuit inside here. One of the ways that it changes from red to green and just sits on top of the battery, like so. so. Anyway, let's uh, take a look inside the body portion first. A couple little uh, U-clips that hold this back part of the body, and then of course, this thing has a ton of screws. There are like seven here. There's six here, plus two clips. Each of these sections is screwed together. It's just so many parts. Well, pulling these little screws out was really, really easy. Uh, they were just had such low resistance, it indicates a lower quality plastic. Um, because they should have been tighter than that, and it seems. And yes, that would be the first indicator there, ABS. It is not polycarbonate PC. It is not PA, which is nylon. And it is not fiber reinforced. It's just ABS plus TPE, which is the overt molding. So it does not even have, it's not even ABS with glass fiber. Indicates why it was so easy. And um, it's not going to be <laughs> taking a lot of drops because that is not a particularly great material to make power tool bodies out of. If we look down here, this is our simple controller where the battery comes in it also probably cuts off the motor if it either if it overloads or if the battery gets too low it may have the cutoff in that board but it's the uh, variable speed controller and then the actual potentiometer i've never seen this before taking apart a lot of tools and they find some way maybe even a lever mechanism to activate a larger i guess potentiometer for a variable speed on a tool but this, they've actually integrated the variable speed, quote unquote, trigger, the whole mechanism's integrated into the trigger lever itself and is just one simple screw to hold in there. A little bit of uh, silastic, which is like a silicone that kind of prevent the wires from fatiguing, but kind of interesting there. Simple motor, little DC motor. It does have a little fan, although there's not much venting for it to cool itself as a matter of fact that simple hole <laughs> is how it's able to vent itself and then of course the reverse switch up here pull the head off and so that's how the head's being driven is just via this hex right here which is not a quarter inch it's something smaller than a quarter inch it's actually really wobbly so it's Looks to mean some of the power loss. There is actually, I mean, it's okay, but there's still a fair amount of resistance. Uh, be, that I have to, I mean, I have to use a fair amount of force to turn this in order to get the chuck to work. Also, interestingly enough, if this moves clockwise, then that moves counterclockwise. 
stem of that gear rides in a centered sleeve bearing there and this is a metal gear housing which makes sense because it's trying to support the whole head and so which means that this should just pop out of there pretty easily let's see uh, if it's all metal gears and usually they'll you know if it's gonna be if I can get the little plate out of here if they're gonna have any plastic gears it's gonna be in the you know, since it's a two-stage gearbox there's gonna be less load on the first stage than there is on the second stage so that's usually where they uh, put cheaper gears as we can see here the at least the ring gear and the planet gears are steel and actually the sun gear is also steel so it's all metal for just for some reason the sun gear is like blackened and it's really like goopy inside here I don't really understand it although I think that maybe part of the problem is like this grease I've never seen that happen I don't know if I can show you here look at this grease I mean I can turn I'm pushing against grease and the gearbox is turning like whatever and I mean look at this this stuff is like whatever grease they use was so cheap that it is turning into some kind of like adhesive or something it's, it feels plasticky not greasy at all I've never experienced that I mean look at this grease you should not be able to rub your finger on top of something that's greasy and have it come on camera have it stay clean I mean this grease right here I mean it's weird it's like halfway dried maple syrup I mean it must have been just battling just to make it over the amount of resistance that it was encountering so we do have a first stage all steel at least they're all steel I don't know why they would have used oh, just such a terrible lubricant like this I mean they may not even know but there's I mean this lubricant is so bad it would have been better dry than having something that turns into some kind of paste and actually to reduce to get the super low 300 or 175 rpm and to give it enough torque surprisingly enough that motor spins fast and this is actually one of the rare or relatively rare here there we go triple reduction or a triple stage planetary reduction gearbox and I'm gonna have to spend a minute it appears that the gear sizes on the first stage are a little bit smaller than the second stage and the second and third stages just appear to be identical planet gears I mean I have to use tooth pliers and actually like yank these gears out when they should just be falling out I mean I'm just still just blown away okay so that's unfortunate so it has a one-way clutch so you can use it as a screwdriver to break screws and now I'm understanding some of the complaints on why gears are breaking so those are our little pins for the spray clutch here's essentially the guide this is pushing against the pins they're kind of hard to show in some of these interesting design choice since this whole gearbox is one centered piece what they've done that little booger grease out of there what they've done is they've inserted the other section of the sprag clutch that little weird shaped piece in the bottom is the output and then they uh, shoved in this little collar so this thing rattles around in there but it can actually be removed you can see that there's three wing three little nubs and then like uh, kind of a hump region so what happens is when you try to turn a screw and break a screw it tries to drive power this way that's turning forcing these little bearings up those little humps in between the tabs forcing them outward causing it to not want to move and lock up but when you're turning this portion it's turning against these little needles thus just transferring the tab and allows power to go this way freely
and that's how those spray clutches work. Unfortunately, all the torque, the spray clutch is in the gearbox. So when you're breaking a screw, you're basically holding this and forcing all the gear components here to take the full load of, a, of breaking free fasteners. And I'm sure that's probably where half the strip gears come from. Uh, that's a horrible design choice. They needed to have put that spray clutch right here, right up front, so that none of the gears were going to be taking the load of actually some breaking stubborn fasteners. And that's unfortunate. Having this where you have to worry about if you're going to strip out super thin little gears like this, or excuse me, not those, but little gears inside here is just uh, no good because then you're just stuck having to break screws with some other screwdriver and using this to run it in. So it's about that's about what it's good for, really, is working on computers. It's just a shame everything's so small and that they use some terribly, some ter something terrible went wrong with the order on the grease, and they ended up with uh, something that I don't think is a lubricant or they got ripped off, but it is turned into just 100% plastic. It had, like, no oils in it. it there is no nothing that feels greasy or lubed about this at all it's just horrific oddly enough you can see extra holes where this stage at least in one design had six gears instead of three same thing here i wonder if on this stage i don't think so on the final stage but that's interesting that they actually could have been upgraded to six gears on the first two stages let's take a look at the head Boy, for, before I forget how the, they do the swivels, actually all these holes here, when you pull the button up, it actually retracts this whole six-tooth collar, which you know, seems interesting because that's actually a pretty robust design, having the, all these teeth here, seven teeth, engaged directly into the body, the metal body of the gearbox, but other areas they had design fails. I'm actually going to try to be careful taking this apart because... We have our spring-loaded buttons. For our articulation. Let's finish trying to pull off at least this top portion here. This feels like it was nylon. The screws were a lot tighter when I was pulling this, this portion off. It's going to be fun trying to hold that together. Yeah, this feels pretty stiff. This is, just feels like it's a better quality piece of plastic. We can see all the powers. that We have one side reserved for dealing with the locking mechanism. This side is being reserved for power. And here's the hokey little cheese ball light. The worst part about this light is it's powered by one of these just super microscopic button cells, whatever size this thing is. If anybody ever wants to know, God, I can't even read that. Well, I'll have to read it in a minute here. Anyway, we have our spring. And this mechanism here, this piece is obviously sighted. And probably the same will go for here. Here's what's locking it together. When you're pushing these buttons, what it's doing is it's taking this little piece and retracting it below the plate and then allowing the head to turn and when it comes back up it connects these splines here to the splines in this little steel plate and that's how the locking mechanism works so you know seems like an elegant enough design or idea same kind of useless grease over here on this side yeah i worry about these gears stripping out i mean they're reasonably sized for being a basic electric screwdriver but not breaking screws and having the, all the tension being held by these side gears. We have one little spur gear there. Both of these are actually held on by Eclipse and then we actually do have a separate kind of steel brace on this side. Single flat D type keyway to drive these gears and the middle one's just an idler gear and Eclipse to hold it on. This thing is, I mean, there, as you can see, there's just so many different parts and gears and pieces of metal. Uh, just such a complicated design to try to make it, you know, if this is something that Bosch or Milwaukee or 
Makita, DeWalt, somebody like that, uh, if they were to make a tool like this, it would probably be two to three hundred dollars just due to the expense of making high quality versions of all these components. Interesting, this is like a custom plate with a. Oh, come on, camera. With like a little welded component on it. And now we will finally get to take it apart, these little gearboxes. Which are probably going to have the same gears we do. We can see more centered sleeve bearings on each side, so they at least tried with that. And there's our little set of bevel gears. And the grease in here hasn't quite dried as badly, but it still is like some kind of horrific grease. We actually have a little thrust washer right there to help keep the gears, I guess, meshing a little bit better. I mean, for a bevel gear, that thing is still pretty darn small. That's for sure. That part of the housing. Whoop. Oh, interesting. So, the way this is set up, part of the way the truck is set up, the spring wants to kind of shove it all forward when you pull it out. I just couldn't understand what was going on there, why this was shifting around. So, what we do is we have one centered bearing here on the front and a ball bearing right here. Unbelievably, there is one ball bearing that we managed to find in this tool, and that's to probably to handle the thrust loads when you're pressing down and running a screw. Uh, this is the most efficient way for them to deal with that and prevent this gear from just getting driven really hard into its little side bevel gear. But these bevel gears, I mean, they are pretty darn small to once again be breaking screws. And let's take apart the last piece. I'm going to mention the horrible grease. I mean, I have barely any in my hands, and I'm just handling greasy gears. It's like, like sticker adhesive. I should mention that those sleeve bearings actually are flanged, so they act as thrust bearings on the internals. Now, another component that is going to be spring-loaded here. Oh, and surprisingly enough, the grease actually looks greasy in this one spot. Okay, so we just gotta try to pop all this out. So this gear has a little sleeve bearing. Well, here's this little sleeve, and I actually have the spring is should be vertical. So this is the that lock sleeve that we saw earlier. Put that there with its little spring. This is the input gear, so its thrust loads are being taken care of by a, this little sleeve bearing right here. I wonder if there's a washer on the back side of it. No, there's not, just because it is running. Just a simple sleeve bearing. And once again, this is also being supported on the other end by the gearbox itself. And last but not least this input gear or excuse me it also had a washer this is so this is the output of this stage and then the similar component in the upper part of the head would be the input and i guess that's because this is where it's sandwiched and there's a little bit of load that from that from these gears that are external when you twist or torque on it trying to probably push this away so that's why they added the washer just to provide a little bit of extra I guess um, wear protection on a higher load area so if we zoom out some here if I can just get these into the image sort out some of my tools a little bit here it may take me a minute to put all this back together but man I mean, why did that get folded up? 
there is just all these parts all these gears I mean between that the gearbox the side gears the sets of bevel gears we've got two sets of bevel gears so that's four independent gears another nine in the gearbox is 13 plus these three side gears is 16 individual excuse me 17 because there is actually the original plun uh sun gear coming off the motor 17 gears and kind of oddly enough there's 15 screws and 17 gears and one single ball bearing so at least it does have one ball bearing just for where the thrust is being taken <laughs> at least they did that anyway that's kind of the deal of this tool it actually seems like okay seems like they found a decent manufacturer actually build it because you've just got all these little cast parts centered steel parts you know more little cast parts you know specialized locking parts like this and like this i think this is this plastic is molded in with this piece that makes it a little bit more expensive but trying to hit their price target it was kind of like one of those interesting ideas where they got some in, people to invest in it but I thought this was really greasy greasy I mean look at that I mean uh, that isn't it just looked like grease but it's actually like plastic anyway the worst grease I've ever seen for what they did you know what are you gonna say it still is a weak tool because it just has a million parts and it was a neat idea but they you know it's an extremely complex and very expensive design and for the pry for it to be really good and really you know super smooth running and having plenty of power it would have been way too expensive of a product and they wouldn't have sold any instead they tried their best to make it hit like a certain price point but once again all these different parts there's always be some kind of uh weak link or issue but it's kind of like you know it's an interesting idea but it higher needs a heavy redesign just to try to make it a little bit more simple and a little bit uh, tougher and there's probably some way of doing that I don't know what it is but anyway hope everybody enjoyed this video it's a more complex teardown I haven't done a teardown of something really intricate like this in a while and I'm gonna spend a minute trying to scrape up some of this old kludgy grease and putting a little bit of fresh grease in there and getting all of these pieces back together